Welcome to our study in the book of Revelation in the Bible. And today we are back in chapter 13, and our goal is to finish the chapter. I would like to encourage you to do this before you listen to this video. If you did not listen to the video that is numbered uh, prior to this one, um, it's all about the beginning of chapter 13, but it's about the visions of Daniel in chapter 2 and in 7, the world empires, and then the final world empire that is yet to come. I lay that foundation and pull prophecy from Daniel of the Old Testament and tied it into uh, chapter 13, and s some of those verses are going to be taught today. And so I am not going to take the time here to review that which is readily available to anyone. So please go back and check, although I will review a little bit just to get us into it. So thank you for joining us, most of all. And uh, the phrase that comes out of this chapter, chapter 13, that is uh, most picturesque of it is this quote, and his number is 666. So the bulk of this chapter is about Antichrist, and the rest of it is about the false prophet, the second beast. And very important we get these things straight as we get into them. We're in seven signs, finishing up that point in the outline. You can see on this map that we are in the last three and a half years of the Great Tribulation, although Antichrist has been around for since the beginning. Uh, it's just now that it, this is a snapshot, an opportunity to identify. Actually, it is where he turns um, on people and on Israel, along with the false prophet. And uh, we'll see that as we get into the chapter. And so chapter 13 is about signs involving two beasts. First of all, and we looked at verse 1, I just used verse 1 in the last lesson as a springboard, but I am going to read the entire chapter here, uh, and we will pick up on verse 1 also. The beast out of the sea is actually, in the Greek, the sea of humanity, and that would be around the area of the Mediterranean Sea, and that's where Antichrist comes from. We read about him in the first 10 verses. And I stood, I, we, it should be, and we stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast. Beast in the Greek is monster, and he is a monster. Rise or ascend. It would be like one of the Godzilla movies, and the Godzilla is in the sea, and he sort of just, you, you see the crown of his head, and then the, his ears sort of just rise in horror and in fear up out of the sea. And it is the sea of humanity, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Now the crowns are diadem crowns. And so the ten crowns here represent ten nations, or the rule of ten nations of him grabbing, and it's probably a European-type union uh, because all the other nations are already aligned, and we find them in the book of Revelation and attacking Israel um, and causing problems. So we'll get to that and have gotten that into the past. So here's a picture of that. Do you notice who is in the background? Uh, Satan as the dragon. This is what we spent our time looking at, and this chart pretty much identifies, and what I may want to make mention of is this, with what is found in the blue column. The four, the four, the identity of the four world empires, Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, and Rome, have already come and gone. However, uh, there becomes a ten-nation alliance under the Antichrist, and it's the revival of the Roman Empire. The first three empires were stomped out, but Rome, while it lost all power and just sort of disappeared into insignificance, still uh, pieces of it have, have been were left and are still around today of territories that Rome once ruled 
and uh, I have a chart on that a little bit later on. And so when we see the beast out of the sea, we need to understand he is going to lead uh, a confederation once again, and it's the revival of the old Roman Empire, or we can call it Rome II. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, which is agility and craft, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. If you see the Daniel 7 chart, you'll see the leopard and the bear and the lion. And he is like the like previous ones, yet uh, has greater power and perhaps combined power of all of that. And I saw one of his heads, as it were, wounded. And it's the same word as Jesus was wounded for our sins in the Gospels, to death. And his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And so here we have wounded, and I mentioned the same as Jesus' death, and then wondered after is that they followed after. They were just in awe, and the world would follow after the beast. Now we're talking about he was wounded, wounded unto death, etc. All right, it's time to just park a minute again and just discuss did Antichrist get killed and did he come back to life? because there's a lot of discussion on this. But keep in mind, we're dealing in symbolic things. Antichrist is not a gigantic beast, okay? He's a man that is, acts like one. And so there's symbolic things that need some explained, but I don't, and I won't need to say this right now, I don't have all the answers on this. I really don't, but I know what I think it is and feel, and I would, and I would defend it and be able to defend it. All right, so let me just read, and so you have in print what I'm saying, and you can go study on your own. Many feel that the Antichrist will be killed, but this passage doesn't say that. Based on verse 2, we see three of the world empires mentioned. And then all of a sudden, this is the fourth and revised Roman Empire mentioned here. So consider, once again, we're dealing with world empires, but they're described as animals. And here's a beast coming up out of the sea, an animal, and uh, a monster animal. And so consider the thoughts in that realm and what's going on here. Antichrist will lead a confederation of seven world governments or empires. I'll use the word empire, but governments is better. It appears that one of the major governments or one of those countries or confeder confederates takes some kind of a death blow. So it's like a, the death of a portion of his landmass or of his following, that something happens and that this attack is so big that it kills the political power of that confederation for a while. For how long, we don't know. But it is understandable that if, if an army loses a major battle, it's like a death blow to them. We could say, well, is that going to be their death blow? But see, they're still alive. But this, this took a, a, and it's talking about a big chunk of this is going to happen to Antichrist and his empire. Number two, very important, Satan does not have the power to bring people back to life. Have you ever read in the scripture anywhere that he is the one that controls life and death? He does not. He does not have the power to bring people back to life. Jesus Christ brings people back to life. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Jesus Christ, when he returns, will bring his people out of the graves. The graves will be open. Have, and the saints gathered into the air. Christ has that. So to believe Antichrist can resurrect himself or the false prophet resurrect him is not biblical. And you might say, well, Satan takes that power. No, he doesn't. I don't read that that's given to him by God anywhere. Number three, this is a fatal wound that normally would kill, but Antichrist recovers from this. So here's uh, the next thought on this. Symbolically, with Satan's help, and these are thoughts that I've read that are out there. Uh, symbolically, with Satan's help, it is restored, and the Antichrist comes back stronger than ever before. 
the head being healed, and I put those in quotes, is a restoration of the Roman Empire, and there is an emperor again, in this case, the Antichrist, and it's the strongest empire. And so the head wound denotes the empire, meaning a, a, a country or a portion of a major land holding boundary is, is smitten and devastated. But with the help of Satan and the false prophet, Antichrist recovers and continues to rule, only he comes back very, very uh, much more stronger than ever before. And so I am concluding here real quick, but number five, remember this, the anti-Trinity, okay, there is the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The anti-Trinity is made up of Satan is the anti-God, the Antichrist is the Son of God, Jesus Christ, Antichrist, and the false prophet, the 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 godly, the Holy Trinity, is God the Holy Spirit, God the Holy Ghost. The false prophet fulfills that religious factor of that. And we're going to see more about him at the end of the lesson, I believe. So also illusions today, media projections, all misdirection and deceptions can happen today. It's amazing what can be projected in front of us and that we can believe. And what do you think could happen with the technology that people have today. A probable simple explanation would be this. The original Roman Empire had a death blow, but portions of that kingdom never have gone away. Antichrist rises and revives this empire as the resurrected head. So here is the, the, the 10 divisions of Rome. This comes out of history books. All right, this is, these are the, the places they conquered and the nations today that they that, that exist out of them. The boundary lines would be somewhat different, but this is where it would fall out. Notice out of the 10, three of them are gone. How many, how many nations or land masses does Antichrist control? Seven. So look at France, Portugal, Germany, England, Italy, Switzerland, Spain. All very, very key and very, very important nations today. So consider that thought there. Let's continue on in, in Scripture. And they worship the dragon, which gave power unto the beast. All right, now they're worshiping Satan unto the beast, Antichrist. And they worship the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who's able to make or wage war with him? And so I wrote down here as a note, just so everybody remembers, look now who is being worshipped, the devil and the Antichrist. There's already devil worship going on around the world. Now Antichrist joins it. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to carry out his work or to continue his work 42, 42 months or three and a half years. So we're into the last three and a half years. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Wow. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints. There's going to be people that are saved during this time. He's going to go out and seek them and try to kill them. And to overcome or to win a victory over them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Where does he get his power from? Satan. Demonic. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life, of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. So the book of life holds the names of everybody that has been redeemed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ through the ages. And it, 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 this is futuristic, so it will be right up to date. And those that believe in the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world, the Jesus Christ, the Son of God, are saved. Our names are in the book of life. Amen. Notice the phrasing, uh, the slain from the foundation of the world, it shows up five times in the entire Bible. And so God the Son had a relationship of love and fellowship with God, the Father before the foundation of the world. The work of Jesus was ordained before the foundation of the world. 
God chose his redeemed before the foundation of the world. Here's the book of life reference. The kingdom of heaven was prepared for the redeemed before the foundation of the world. That would be a good study just on your own and for me to do. If any man have an ear, let him hear. All right, now what this is saying right here, it's not saying, do you hear me? It's saying, did you hear me and did you listen? It requires action. Did you hear me? Do you get it? All right, act. It should, this should stir us to do something with our Christian faith, to be vocal about it and to share it. It should spur us to be righteous and to live for the Lord. And if you don't know Christ as your Savior, if you don't know if you died today, you'd go to heaven, you need to be in the, in the book of life, the Lamb's book of life. You need to be saved today and receive Christ. So here's 10, and this wraps up this section. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Actually, it's a very basic word, meaning one take of captive, it's spear point. He that kills with the sword shall be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So explanation of this verse. If you follow the beast and lead people to him and to there, you are going, he, he is leading you into captivity and you will be given to that captivity. If you are a follower of him and you bring people to follow him, you are going to follow him and his punishment. Now, the beast out of the land is the false prophet. And this concludes the whole chapter, verses 11 to 18. And the false prophet is really comes as a lamb, but he's a wolf. And I beheld another beast or monster coming or ascending up out of the earth. All right, so this is the beast out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Wow. He appears, he comes as the lamb of God, the one that has compassion and love and mercy. And this is the false prophet, though. He's the religious leader. And there is worship of the false prophet today. So his identity, um, he's called the second beast. He's called the fa false prophet mostly three times uh, here in the book of Revelation later on. Not here, though. And some believe that he'll be a Jew because the Antichrist is a Gentile Jew mix. But that's just somebody believes that. The first two are true. Activities, what does he do? He seeks to imitate the role of the Holy Spirit. And we'll, we'll see this as I read Scripture, but I'm giving this all to you up front. How does he imitate the Holy Spirit? Okay, he's the third person of the anti-Trinity. Ah. Number two, he seduces men into all error. The, whole, the Holy Spirit leads us into truth. He glorifies the Antichrist, where the, the Holy Spirit his job is to glorify Jesus Christ and to lead us within our hearts and with our soul, lead us to glorifying and praising and uplifting Jesus and the name of Jesus. He will bring down fire from heaven, supposedly, but the Holy Spirit has, is the fire of heaven within our hearts and burns it with passion. He brings death where the Spirit of God brings life and new birth and new relationship with God. He marks those who worship Satan, but the Holy Spirit preserves and seals us into the body of Christ and to the love of Jesus and leads us to have the mark of the Lord. So his mark 666, we read about that coming up. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him. He causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. See, he points people to the Antichrist, which is the opposite of the Holy Spirit. We just noted that point. And he does or causes great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven and on the earth in the sight of men. All right? If we phrase that in the, with using the Greek word that is given uh, it's easy to say, and he does great wonders, but he causes great wonders. That takes it out of his hands, that 
he can manipulate is it technology i don't know just because he appears to do miracles does not mean he is of god miracles are translated signs and wonders in the bible and why is he doing this and deceives them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles or signs which he had power to do in the sight of the beast saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live so now all of a sudden we need to build another image just like nebuchadnezzar had one built let's build one to the to this beast and he had power and unto him it should be should read and unto him was given power and to animate life unto the image of the beast ah so he's going to make it like the image of the beast should come alive and speak i can go over to disney and watch any of their light shows and see that going on right now that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many was as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed so he speaks and says all right if you know anybody that won't worship the beast let us know we need to kill him and he causes all both small and great rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark or a brand on their right hand or in their foreheads it's the mark of the beast and that no man might buy or sell save that he had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name so this is where you get nobody can buy or sell unless he has that mark and here is wisdom or here is understanding here and that, that's a sentence that's a statement and what we need to do is it almost tells us to stop here a minute and think about this because wisdom is deep wisdom is the the using of knowledge and understanding correctly so let us correct it's saying let us be correct here and uh, understanding let him that has understanding count the number of the beast for it is the number of a man well that's going to be six and his number is six hundred three score and six or six sixty six and that is the number of the beast all right and so that wraps us up for this lesson but it doesn't because the lesson fly away is unlocking 666 all right what what i need to share with you is this it's real easy to say well the number of the beast is 666 and that's true but that's not his name his name is in numbers and um some someone took henry kissinger who was secretary of state decades ago now with his middle name and assigned that the letter a was one letter b is two you follow what i'm saying and they took all of his his numbers and they add them all together and it says 666 they thought it was antichrist actually nero was the fir the the first person ever thought to be antichrist uh, because they took his multi-name proper name caesar wasn't isn't one of them and did the same thing with the greek numbers and it came out to that but you had to use everything with him and he's not wasn't the antichrist because we're still around and so first of all god gives us wisdom and understanding to solve this puzzle six is the number of a man and it leans to not just imperfection but the striving of man to become more so keep in mind that number three 666 is the indicator that antichrist will be the most perfect human man that demonic hell can produce and become because anytime there's a, a triplet in the bible it it means multiple outcome or strength or anything else that you can think of when david said oh and prayed oh absalom absalom oh my son absalom he used absalom three times and it, it, was, it was severe severe grief that he was in sorrow he was experiencing over the death of his son 
Okay, that's what's spoken of here. But it's, it's evil power because it's a number of man. Question that I would ask with tech plus medicine plus money plus power plus the media and, and misinformation, we really easily could get 66, 66 out of this. So does that sound familiar, like the Tower of Babel? I don't know. But I don't know how, I, if we spent time thinking and taking names, I, I think if somebody studied it a good long, long time, and there are people that do that, we, we could get close. But you know what? I don't think he's, a, if he's around, we don't know it yet. Or he's in hiding. And if he's not around, we wouldn't have a name that we could run this on. Keep in mind, we'd be dealing with Rome, uh, with with um, Greek numbers, or we might be dealing with the Roman ones. So there's a there's a double thought right there. So Christian, just know the number of the beast is six sixty six, and at this point, I think our I think our prayer is. Even so, come Lord Jesus, not Lord. I need help me to identify the beast. I don't think yet, but go ahead and study it and go searching. Become super educated in that. That's great, but stay in the Word of God. Watch our culture and see what is happening around us, because what we're seeing is the the formation of of one world and one economy. And one thought, do you, see, do you see businesses that used to be American now consider and state? We are, we are a world corporation. We are a business of the world. We don't belong just to here. And so they don't like, a, they don't like our country anymore because they have to love all of the other countries and get in and have friendships and alliances with people that we don't, would never agree with. But there they are. So they don't care. And we see religion coming together, false religions. We see the rise of it right now. We see evil, Satanism, the rise of that, and devil worships going on. In America, it's, it's huge. You, you can find a local place to go to and worship Satan almost anywhere. And so be steadfast in the Word of God. And stick with us in the book of Revelation as I finish it off. And thank you. I've given you, I've given you, I think, some good Bible teaching today, but I've also given you something to go search for and some things that we don't have the answers for right now. But it makes good studying. And uh, you could get far deeper than I ever could go. Um, just uh, if the Lord lays that up on your heart, Go looking and become a, a scholar uh, in the Word of God and, the, in the, and in Revelation. And may God bless you for that. Father, we thank you so much. This really should not be about Antichrist and the false prophet. But we want to thank you, Lord, that you tell us about them because they are going to be so diabolical and, and mean and evil, wicked. They are literally going to be monsters and their behaviors and their messaging, how they blaspheme the name of God and our Savior and the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, our, our thought and our concern and the question that we should be answering is, what are we doing with Jesus Christ right now? How are we living for him? How are we a testimony and a light in this, in this dark age? So as we see darkness getting darker as the days and years go on. May the testimony of Jesus Christ shine greater. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Thank you, God bless you, and I'll see you in chapter 14.